Uh, we have a video to react to, but before we do that, I guess the point I was trying to make by asking you guys about, you know, what would you do for an employer? It's like the same girl who will work a brutal fast food job dealing with a bar, a boss, excuse me, barking orders, cleaning dirty dishes, the bathroom, shitty customers for like $15 an hour. But like, say a, a good guy comes into the picture who has the money to support her fam, family and make sure she never has to work a day in her life again. She doesn't want to bow. She doesn't want to cook. She doesn't want to clean, whatever it is. It's just confusing to me because it's like your husband's going to ask way less of you than your employer. You'll do all the, like, the cleaning, <laughs> the cooking. An employer will ask you to do that if you're in like food service or something. A lot of women have experience you know, in food waitressing or whatever it is. You'll do it for an employer, but you won't do it for your husband. And that's very confusing to me. Um, or take it further in other, if it's, you know, if we're not talking about like a job that's a bit more physical, you'll be submissive to your employer. That's a cold corporation, your boss, but you won't be submissive to a man who loves you and who you love back. I don't know. It's confusing to me. And the silence would indicate to me that I don't know if you guys agree like you've come to this realization that you've all submitted to your to the faceless corporation. You go work for Facebook or Google or whatever. They compensate you well. But at the end of the day, they tell you, be here at this time. Do this. Do that. Sit in a chair. Be good and obedient. If you don't, you lose the job. You get fired. You've traded your submission to men for the cold, heartless corporation. It's an interesting trade. Yeah, but the comparison is like, your comparison is like, if you're with a man, well, that is your comparison, or you're with a man, that makes you not have to work. That wasn't initially what you said, you just said, the question was just, would you bow to your men? Sure. Well, I added, anything, I added but some like, extra details here. Yeah, 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 but that's what I mean, now it's changed. Now mm -hmm. you're like, if you don't have to, and by the way, by this, through this conversation, I'm like, I don't think I, I don't know. I kind of changed my mind about the bow. I think. Oh, you're it, against the bow now. No, 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 no. I was oh. against it. And now I'm like, maybe it's not hmm. like, maybe as a sign of, like, maybe it's not as, but as I thought it was initially, because I, 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 I always just think from my perspective, right? It's like, so, okay, let's say there's a guy or I, I mean, I'll even like my own perspective. Like if, if I'm making $2 million, $3 million a year, and I want to date a submissive girl and you could be my life partner and I'll take care of everything. You never have to work a day in your life. Yeah. You just got to take care of me. And in fact, by helping me, you'll help me earn more money mm -hmm. by taking some of the pressure off my life. Yeah. So by freeing up time for me, I'm going to go out there and earn just because of you, because you're in my life. I'll go earn an extra half a mil a year because yeah. you're making my life easier. And that enables me to work more and earn more. Yeah, I get But that. you can do that as a woman and I could come in your life and totally change it mm -hmm. or you can work for 70K a year. <laughs> yeah, but nine I mean, to five, yeah, it depends. be here at this time. Wake yeah. up at this time. But I mean, this. if the if that means, if like the money, whatever, first of all, like personally, my value is not necessarily a super, super rich guy, but yeah, I would be happy to have. But like my criteria is like, if the guy's a dick and then he makes a lot of money and I'm not, I wouldn't want to submit. But if like, you know, m what I need is a connection and what I need is like, I also need respect. And, but I also need to be able to be myself, to be authentic and to do things that I love. If I'm not able to do the things that I love, like play music or the things that I love really that fills my soul then what what's the point of me being in a relationship if I can be myself and do things that I love and vice versa also I think and I think you don't you shouldn't have you to choose what? That, that's you what I mean no music. because you said you said give up Tara or whatever well she does it for a profession to make money so yeah, but she, she loves she doing could it have, so for example she could have a full she could have a day uh, she could work a full work week where she's got 10 new clients a day yeah. and she's doing a tarot reading for 10, 20 people a day. Yeah. And she's, that's a full-time job. Yeah. I didn't understand and it a guy, as a job. I understood it as just a hobby. 
Yeah. Like so she like, has to not do things that she loves. That's that's the only way I understand it. I'm just it. thinking like if if you could be involved with a guy mm-hmm. that he makes a million dollars a year yeah. and you can be with him or you can make a hundred thousand dollars a year and be on your own. I, I, like, I don't know. Well, there's just so many more elements. It's, it's you know, sure. that, that's why it's like, if you just tell me like a guy that's super rich and I don't have to. Sure. I would. I mean, yeah, I would love that. I think who wouldn't want to not have to work? I would actually always want to work. I really? Think life without work, there's I, no challenge. It's boring. I personally think oh, people yeah. who are like stay at home. Well, moms, we'll give you 10 years in the workforce. They're force, really so strong. I could not mind. do that. Like Wait, I, huh? you, go ahead. Finish your point. Go ahead. I was saying that I would always want to work because I feel like I would just feel empty that I'm not pursuing something that I love. Do you want kids? I am still kind of debating on that. If well, let's honest. leave that for a second. How old did you say you were? 22. Just yeah, give it a decade, and then we'll see if you want to work or not. <laughs> give it a decade. Some people enjoy Give it working. a decade when you're working and you're grinding for 10 hours plus a day at your job, and then we'll see if you want to keep working. Do you think there's guys who genuinely enjoy working? Like men? Yes. Do you think men genuinely? Yes. Why don't I think, think that most men are hardwired for it and they uh they absolutely enjoy it so you but think- they don't have they don't have to go into the conflict that women do the biological conflict of wanting to have a family and childbearing and nesting men don't have this same conflict women you, do even and the other I- thing is is that even though i know men absolutely love to work right i think that they absolutely would love to work on their passion projects even more than working at a job for a boss so if you were to say okay man you're liberated with five million dollars to pursue x i think that they would choose that very quickly okay but personally i think like even if i would want to have a child you can you can childbear and then you go back to work if you really truly enjoy it some boom you think there's not a single woman in this world who really doesn't enjoy working no, I would never say that there's not a single. I, I would never group anything in a monolith. Okay. I would say that um, that most women, the majority, the vast, vast majority of women have given the choice not to work or to work, would choose not to work. Perhaps the majority. And I don't think I don't think that that's true of men. I think that men would still choose to work, maybe not jobby jobs, but they would still choose to work. Um, but I, no, I don't think most women would choose to work. And this bears out uh, when you ask them if they would prefer to work or not work if they did not have to. Most of them say that they would prefer not to. So do you think, because I always struggle to understand that, because for me, I am, like you say, men are hardwired to want to work. I think that is true for a majority. But for me, as someone who I could not see myself just not doing anything, I constantly have to be on the go. And well, why, well, I think... I think we're speaking past each other, so maybe we can clarify some things. It wouldn't be that you aren't doing anything. But let me ask you a question. Let's take a girl who works at Subway, and she says, I want to work, right? Okay. What the hell is the difference between her making a Subway sandwich for a customer and making a sandwich for her husband? I don't know. I have never really understood that. You know what I mean? They're both work. It's just like, why would you want to go work for strangers instead of working for your family? I've never really understood that. Well, it, I, just, it, it just seems illogical and nonsensical to me. I do understand that example. I think it just depends on occupation. Like for me, as someone who, who I want to be a lawyer, that's completely different. If you're, you know what I mean? If, you, if I would, would to be a submissive woman, that would my lawyer skills or my debating skills or solving problem solving would not be helpful at all when, you know, if I'm trying to be a submissive woman. <laughs> Yeah, they would be extremely helpful. So you know, you know why we need really smart women raising children? It's because I don't want really dumb women raising children. So all those women who have the capacity to be really, really good lawyers and doctors and things like this, who have those really high IQs, I'd rather see them at home teaching their children. That's where I'd rather see them for the next generation to turn out uh, all of those great high IQs. I want those women having babies and I want them nurturing those babies and making the next high IQ generation, right? I don't want them wasted away in a cubicle. That seems silly to me. But that's not a waste, wasting away in their cubicle for them, if that's what they truly love to do. I do understand. I mean, if you're someone who wants to have kids, if you're a woman who wants to work a high occupation job and have kids, then for sure you've got to make some sacrifices at some point of the child's life when you're working that position. 
But again, it is possible, and I don't think you should put away your passion uh, to raise a kid because that Look, would because that if would, you want to work, if if that's what you feel like you're compelled to do, and you don't actually want to do anything but that, fine. Nobody's saying that you can't do that, right? You can, yeah, and you have every right to. Mm -hmm. But for the vast, vast majority of women, the conflict does not come between I want to work or do not want to work. It comes between I have to work but I'd rather have a family. That's the real conflict which comes up because we value education uh, over family. That's what we do. That's why women get married in their 30s now because they want to have this uh, social safety net, right? The mm -hmm. safety net of something to fall back on. So the big conflict really doesn't come into play between women who just demand to be at work because they want to be there all day, but rather that they have to work because people have to work in modernity in order to make ends meet, right? But let me ask you this, now that I've kind of given you uh, my view on this, mm -hmm. do you think that if you went down the street and asked women, would you prefer to spend the rest of your life working or would you prefer early on to be able to settle down with a man who could provide for you that you loved, which answer do you think they'd give? I mean, most likely they would wanna have a family and settle down. But that, right. But all I'm saying is that that's my that's my whole point, right? And so, like, I would prefer a society where we made that easier for them to do that, rather than a society which valued sending our best and brightest women not to carry the future generation of children, which only they could do, but rather to slave the workforce underneath a boss. That just seems insane to me. Right. So everything is about the choice. I just think that there shouldn't be that much societal pressure to have kids if you don't want to. You know what I mean? That's why? Why shouldn't there be so? Why should there be so much societal pressure instead to value uh, going to college, for instance, where uh, useless degrees are handed out like they're candy? In fact, it's so bad the standards have gotten so low that anybody can do it. College can't be about rewarding the best and the brightest, or everybody couldn't get through college, but they can. And so the standards have necessarily lowered in order to appeal to the lowest common denominator. A high school diploma is the equivalency of a high school education just 70 years ago. Right. So it's like, why shouldn't there be a national propaganda around a nuclear family and having children instead of national propaganda and wasting your youth and your childbearing years going and getting a worthless degree that almost nobody ever uses? I'd like to know the answer to that question. Because if you're... If you know that your true passion is being in this whatever occupation job that is, and then you're you have a society pressuring you to have a kid, and you feel like oh I ha I have to do this I have to sacrifice this, you're always gonna regret not pursuing what you want to do, and that kid is gonna know that kid is gonna know that you didn't do what you wanted to do. <coughs> and that's, that's so what? That's so, so what? Why? Well, I mean, what do you think sacrifice is about? Patriotism? Do you think that many get drafted and have to go to war? Right? That they don't look back and go, oh, I could have done X and I could have done Y and I could have done Z. There is a, such a thing as patriotism. There is such a thing in a nation as a sacrifice for the nation. Why is this idea that everybody must endlessly pursue endless hedonism the best way instead of people uh, pursuing what the greater good for the actual nation is? That seems way wiser to me. If you're gonna if you're gonna propagandize an entire country, why not propagandize them towards procreation? and uh, having nuclear families and things which are really good for the health of the nation. Why not do that? So you, okay, so you're being that as a grand scheme of things instead of in a particular family. Because sometimes there, there are women and men who have kids and don't pursue something they wanted to do and that affects the family and that causes a generational trauma. Because That's every human being on planet Earth has some pursuance that they weren't able to do. The whole world is filled with failed rock stars and failed artists and failed, you know, uh, professionals of all kinds who chased a dream that they were not able to achieve. I mean, that's most people have some regret of something they weren't able to do. And this kind of idea of that because people have kind of unachievable goals that we shouldn't kind of move society towards these achievable things, which most people can do, which have proven time and time again to increase the happiness levels of almost everybody around, that still seems way better to me. Okay, so you think uh, for the greater good, it is important to pursue something that you don't want, even if that's gonna make you and your family miserable. 
possible. Oh, well, so this is, uh, this is loaded. Recognize how you said this, right? If it, if it necessarily was going to make people's families miserable, how could it be for the greater good? That makes no sense. So if it was for the greater good, the most amount of people would find it useful and the most amount of people would find this to be something which they would want to pursue or it couldn't be for the greater good, right? It couldn't be. I'm speaking of... Like, how, like how could it? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you, you were speaking about greater good and the way I understood you were speaking about a nation and perhaps even a world, how it would work better in a world. But then there are mm -hmm. going to be those really unhappy families who just did this because that was the societal pressure. I mean, that's always going to be the case. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, but you, we're not going to... You, you would never in a million years, for instance, you would never say that there are going to be some people on planet Earth who perform better when they're doing drugs. There are. There's going to be some people who do. You would never say everybody should be able to do drugs because some people who do drugs perform better than others and have regrets they never did drugs. Does that does that even make sense? Would you ever say that in a million years? Of course not. I don't think. Of don't, course not. <laughs> but I don't think drugs would affect anyone positively. To be honest with you. Hmm. No, no. Wait a second. Caffeine well, doesn't I, affect people. Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Caffeine and sugar doesn't affect people positively. Oh, that's what I was about to say. Unless you're talking about those things and like. You mean drugs? Like, do you mean something that was prescriptive or just you're going to go... Even prescriptive as well. There's all sorts of, like, for instance, you say you think narcotics like um, painkillers, which are highly addictive, aren't highly useful to society? Of course they are. And so, like, this idea that, uh, oh, wait a second, because uh, some people would have preferred to have been on those drugs that we can't regulate or propagandize against them, that's insanity. It's the same thing at the national level. This idea of endless hedonism and individualism with absolutely no thought to, um, to the, the greater society at whole is pure female solipsism. Men seem to understand this very well. And the men I talk to go, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We probably should move towards those things. But when you look at voting patterns, that's what those things move to. Patriotism, nuclear family, anti-degeneracy, that's what men vote for. Women vote purely around solipsism and let me do what I want, which so, is just crazy to me. If, if everyone understands that this is the optimal option, why do you think, especially in this day and age, there's so many people who disagree with that? Okay, I'm going to give you the answer and you're not going to like it. For one reason, one reason only, because of women's suffrage. Women's suffrage absolutely destroyed the United States of America and women's voting patterns prove it. And the truth of the matter is, is that women vote, vote mostly against risk taking. And because they vote mostly against risk taking, they impede on people's freedoms. And so individual people, men especially, who had the opportunity to vote out illegal immigration, keep the country exactly how they wanted it to be, that was all completely destroyed by female suffrage. Men, if only men had been able to vote in the United States of America, right now the United States of America would be beyond the, the glorious shining example on the hill. It would be beyond that. And the, the voting patterns prove it. Every single time it's a vote for security over the freedom to actually pursue these higher values, women vote against it almost every single time. Okay. And that's what I think. I, I think that that's the primary problem. The primary problem was, um, is, that, is that the two sexes do not see eye to eye on what is valuable. Mm -hmm. And this is why I think that one's going to have to inevitably choose and it'll always move back that way. That all of this, what you see before you right now with egalitarianism, this will all reset eventually. And it'll just go back to primitivism. Men will be in charge anyway. Andrew, you're going to get canceled if you're talking like that, Andrew. Uh, you know, you got to be careful. You're going to get canceled, my friend. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I think well, I don't I don't I've never actually fed. You know who knows this better than anybody? Feminist theorists know this better than anybody else. Feminists are the ones who came up with force doctrine. I just borrowed it from them. <laughs> they were the ones who understood that men at any time collectively could take charge. And there was very little women could do. Feminists theorized all of this. They knew all of this years and years before I was ever born, hundreds of years before I was born, in fact. Uh, almost 200 years before, in fact. 
It's their own writings that I go off of. They insisted, the feminists insisted that women have the right to vote. But when it came to women voting for the right to vote, they wouldn't let them do it because every time women had the opportunity to vote on their own voting rights, they voted against it. Every single time. I do have to move things on. We've been on this for a bit, but we do have one, the video, and then a couple of reactions. Uh, Austin? Yep. We'll do the video first. The, 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 the video I sent you, private chat. Oh, okay. It's just the one we reacted to, I think, last week. Wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. Can you, can you show us, please? Yeah, uh, okay. All right. Yeah. I got away with everything under the last boss, and it wasn't good for me at all. So I want guidance. I want leadership. But don't just like boss me around, you know? Like lead me. Lead me when I'm in the mood to be led. Does that resonate with, with any of you? Mm. So you want, I mean, he's talking in the workplace, but like this is what I see when women say they want a masculine man, dominant man, a man who's a leader who mm -hmm. has leadership characteristics, who takes initiative. You want all these traits, but you want to pick and choose. You want the man to be able to turn that shit on with a light switch. You only want him to be a leader in some contexts. In other contexts, you want him to be a good, submissive boy, pat him on the head. Good boy. It's just interesting. Yeah, I mean. I just don't, I, I, I don't think anything is black or white, generally. You know, things very nuanced. Well, it's yeah. true. Like, you, you, I mean, if you want to talk about things like that, relationships, like, it, it, it just isn't. But it isn't. It's like, no, but it's not, it's, it's two not humans. Black or... They're very complex. No, it doesn't have to be just one way or just the other way. Like, you have two people. It's very complex. And first of all, I think that, like, you have masculinity and, like, feminine, femininity, let's say. And everyone's kind of, like, there on the spectrum, kind of, right? So everyone's going to find someone that's, like, complementary to them. No, but so, like you, if you ask most women, like yeah. you, they want a guy to take the lead, to take charge. Yeah. In the dating context, yeah. you want the guy to make pretty much all the moves. Like I women do agree that women are contradictory. I, I agree with that. I, I know what you and mean. You and you want a man. Oh, uh, like you see these memes. Like I want a guy who's going to say, be ready at 7 p.m. I'm going to pick you up. We're going here. <laughs> Y'all want that. But then you also kind of don't want, like it's, they're totally mixed signals. And then also you say you want a leader, but like you don't want to follow is the big thing. In order for somebody to be able to lead, if you want a man who's a leader, yeah. you got to be a follower. There mm -hmm. is no, we can't both be the leader. You don't think you can sometimes be, sometimes not be? You don't think you can kind of like you, move you around? Can, to... You can, but... If you want the man to be a leader, yeah. I don't really I think you, you can. If that's what you want, and yeah. If that's what you like, yeah. yeah, there can be some dynamics like that. Yeah. But if you want, broadly speaking, yeah. and I think women, broadly speaking, want men to be leaders. Yeah. What you're saying is like they're contradictory with themselves. Well, like the thing, you, yeah, and it's I get like it. Yeah. On a sort of biological, evolutionary mm -hmm. level, you're attracted to men who are leaders, who are confident, who take initiative, who are masculine, who are dominant, who have those leadership traits. But feminism has put it into your mind not to be a follower. So you won't be submissive. You won't follow his lead. But you want him to be a leader. You want him to take the initiative. You want him to lead, but you won't follow. Be the leader, but I won't follow you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense. That doesn't work. Yeah. Some, if you want a leader, somebody's got to be the follower. And yeah. I can't lead with somebody who won't follow. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that you, you can't. You must not have an opinion. Because sometimes it doesn't mean that you must not have an opinion. Like you're still in a relationship, right? Like I understand your synergy of like followers and 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 the leader. But in any leader follower, you still have mm. you're still gonna have discussions. You're still gonna nope. just earlier you said no. Nope. Well, that's just weird. That's just Do not I, being humans. If I if we I'm do. hold on, if I'm the CEO, <laughs> if I'm the 
if I'm the CEO of a corporation yeah. and I give a task to an employee, yeah. it's not the, the, the employee should not be like, so that's how you want your woman to be your CEO and you just, no, I'm, I'm using, I'm using an analogy to yeah. better articulate the point. Yeah. Um, so my, no, not a, not an employee, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. using the analogy because like, she, that's the, the... If she wants me to pay for the first date and do all this shit and be a leader, yeah. and she never approaches guys, she wants she wants to be approached, she wants me to take the lead in every realm, mm -hmm. she wants me to plan dates, mm -hmm. everything, then yeah. Then yeah, she must not have an opinion. Then you should probably listen to what I say. But if you, you want can't to, listen it, to... Ladies, the... if you want to start sliding into my DMs and hitting me up and paying for first dates and doing all this shit and moving things forward physically and sexually, then we can have a conversation about who should listen and who should be a follower, who should be a leader. I don't, I but don't, until I that don't see point, how that equates to, to like not having an opinion not not like you, you can have an opinion yeah that's what i mean like even earlier you said like someone you. that doesn't quarrel it's like that's not a relationship you're oh, gonna have quarrels that, well, i'm not saying mm, you always uh, the there's always gonna be discussions you're always gonna have like quarrel. you're two humans yeah no there should be no quarreling well whatever you want to call it but like you're never gonna to want someone who's always gonna agree with you <laughs> First of all, I would want to be challenged personally. I would want my ideas to be challenged. I would want my boyfriend to want to be challenged yeah. so that we can like find because for me, okay, I, what what I know We're is like We're different though. Men and women are different. They are. They are. Yeah. So But you guys no, but you are, but I mean, if you talk about men let's look, say like you talk Wait, wait. I got to respond to the Okay. you want to be challenged in a relationship. I don't most men we contend with the world in our lives, mm -hmm. right? The home has to be our peace, right? Yeah. If the home is not our recluse, if the home is not our peace, mm -hmm. and you're quarreling and nagging and just constant, constant conflict yeah. because you're challenging us, that's I, not a good girlfriend. That's not a good. No, wife. I under. Well, that's the thing. That's not a good boyfriend either. And I get that because my ex was kind of like that. But I'm, I'm saying like, you, I, you're gonna bump heads heads sometimes. You're not gonna sure, always. Maybe. You know, like I'm just saying it's gonna happen. But there's a difference between that and like, yeah, always like creating problems, always creating conflicts. I get that. But that's for everybody. Nobody wants to be in a relation. Like you know, you don't want a guy like that. You don't want a girl like that either. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just a given. But you like to just want to someone to constantly agree with you. It's like when you want you you don't want to you don't want to know if you're wrong about something or maybe you have to think something through a bit like further or like maybe there are other options or maybe I will listen. Like, per uh, perhaps perhaps if you don't mind, I would I would like to just ask you two two very simple questions. The first is you yourself personally mm -hmm. would you prefer to have a man who treated you more like an equal or who treated you more like he was in the dominant role and you were to be a submissive follower which would you personally prefer there's no wrong answer yeah i'm not even 100 percent sure because i haven't had a lot of relationships and i've had bad ones so i and I'm being honest, it's not that I don't, I don't want to answer. I'm just not sure what the synergy I would want to be in. Okay. Yeah. So well, maybe let me ask I would... You the you second, let me ask you the second question, as I understand your answer to the first, that you're not sure. Mm -hmm. Do you think that most men would prefer their women to be in a submissive position or a dominant one? No, submissive. But again, I think what I'm submissive. arguing... Yeah, right. Hang on, yeah. hang on. Yeah. Hang on. I agree. I agree that I think most men would prefer their women in a submissive role. And you agree with me that most would, men would prefer their woman in a submissive role. I think so, yeah. If that is true, then if you look for an equal role where you say, okay, wait a second, we're equals, it's not submission, don't you necessarily narrow the field of, of men for yourself like by an incredible amount, right? Yeah, poss possibly, yeah. 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 So when Brian says this, it always sounds bad rolling off the tongue. 
because we're so indoctrinated into egalitarianism, we're all interchangeable widgets and everybody's equal to everybody else. Clearly, though, you have a bit of life experience. You know that that's not true. Um, so, so the question then becomes, can't you value a person's opinion, but at the same time dismiss it? Can't you say, I value what you're saying, but you're wrong, and I'm going to do this anyway, because that's what's for the greater good of our family. Can't you value an opinion and dismiss an opinion? If, if like, a message comes in there was something covering them up, it, you can go to the split. No, you're good. You're good. Go ahead, Andrew. Go ahead. Wait, what? Did something? No, he, he, he uh, exited out. Oh. I don't know why he's there. Oops. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. We can't see you. Okay. Something Sorry, happened. Sorry, I was. Something happened? Or? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just lost all audio. Oh, weird. Uh, okay. So I was just, I, my, the end of my question is can't you, at the same time you value opinion? You value an opinion, dismiss it. Yeah, I, I don't see the logic in dismissing an opinion that I value. If I value yeah, your well, opinion, I'm going to think about well, it. I understand. I'm gonna... I value the opinion of my children, mm -hmm. but I dismiss yeah. the opinions of them all the time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't understand. But as grown ups, how, as two grown ups. How is that, how is that illogical? Well, that's, th that's a completely different scenario. You're talking about Why? kids because kids are kids and because adults was, are adults. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. My question to you was, can you value an opinion oh, okay. and dismiss the opinion that you value? You said, no, that's illogical. But I just showed you how that's not illogical. Okay, yeah. But how do you, the way you value your kid's opinion is like, you know, that kids are, you know, kids and they... It's, yeah, it's well, different not, than the valuing okay, of like your, hey, your wife's opinion, right? We can agree with yeah, that. Yeah, but hang, hang on, hang on, let's back up. But your concept, I'm not yes. Saying, I'm not saying that a woman is a kid. I was just giving you a, a comparison, a very quick comparison to show you how you could value an opinion while at the same time dismissing it. Yes. You say, okay, this is valuable, but I outright dismiss it. Even though I care about your opinion, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean your opinion is going to be correct, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't see why that couldn't be applied in intersexual dynamics between men and women. Of course yeah. it can be. I guess, yeah. Yeah. So that's, I mean, I that's think, what I'm saying yeah. is, yeah. So if we're, if we're looking at this objectively, when Brian says to you, well, wait, I want a woman who's submissive. You say most men want a woman who's submissive. You say, but I want an opinion. Brian says, well, you should have an opinion. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't be able to dismiss it. I don't see what you're actually disagreeing with. But I mean, also, <laughs> the I think it's the definition of value too, like in the sense of like when I talk about va the valuing the opinion of like grown up adults, it's like it's it's you value it because it's something that you can't actually like think about and like and again it depends on situations but like kids generally like young kids it's like they're you don't value it in something that can be well it's sometimes yeah it could be tangible but anyways yes your concept i get your concept and yes you can dismiss yeah yeah so you I, I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I, I get you your completely logic value and, an opinion and dismiss the yeah. opinion at the same time that you value it and yeah. so the, what I what I think happens, and uh, this is just my opinion, but I think we have a lot of sloganeering, where uh, especially under egalitarianism, we think a lot about the slogans of like, "But my opinion matters." It's like, yeah, I think your opinion does matter, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that it's going to matter in every situation, or that it shouldn't be dismissed and dismissed often. Because here's the thing: you and I both know you you're you're 39. You're not particularly young. Right? A lot of people have a lot of opinions that are fucking stupid, right? Like, yeah. isn't that true? They just have a lot of really dumb opinions. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so I mean, and, and don't you dismiss those opinions all the time? It's just being stupid? Yeah, but I think we, yeah. like this conversation goes back to our earlier conversation was like, but then we assume that like, because you're a man, then it's better. I think that's where... Well, then I'm going to ask you a couple other questions just to kind of figure this out, right, and see where this leads. Would you say, if you had to make the comparison, if you were on the spot, right, gun to your head, which sex do you think is more logical and reasonable, men or women? Yeah, probably men. Okay, well then, by this, 
So, I so mean, then an entailment, hang on. So then an entailment there, if you think that men are more logical and reasonable and you think that that is so, uh, then why would my position of you should probably follow the logic and the reason uh, be in any way disputed? It seems, it seems totally rational to me, right? Well, first of all, I just don't think all men are logical and... I'm not saying all. No, I know, I know you're not. All, I know you're not. Yeah, nor am I, I saying that all women are not but logical more, and rational. Yeah, men generally are more logical than women, but I... And also, I don't Would think... Would you rather have a leader who is more logical and rational or more emotional? Yeah, of course, logical and rational. Yeah, but you need, you need both. So if men are more logical and rational. But you need and both. You'd rather have a leader who is more logical and rational. And you think that men would prefer a submissive wife and you would prefer a leader, then it stands to reason to me that you would want the man to lead, right? Sure. I just, <laughs> my point is just I the way sometimes you talk about, or men talk about it, it's as if, or like, yeah, it's as if like we, we shouldn't say anything if we. Like it's it's just it's improbable to just be with another human and just expect them to just never say anything, never get into conflict, never, like, because that. I think that that uh, I understand what you're saying, and to steel man it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. What you're saying is, you hear a lot of rhetoric from different uh, different places, which say, okay, we're going to just utilize women as objects, or opinions don't matter, and they need to just do what the fuck they're told at all times, day and night, right? Something akin to that. Yeah, if you go to the extreme, basically, yeah. of like what what we what or what women hear, I think, and that, I think that's the big pushback. Yeah, but you know generally? who they hear that from? They hear that from women. <laughs> they hear that. Yeah, from maybe. They hear it from feminist propagandists. Men don't say that. They don't say we hate women's opinion or we hate women and we want yeah. them to all be in, to be in abusive. They don't say that. What they say instead is this is the role that I want, the role that I want for you. I don't really hear women or men ever producing the rhetoric that women's opinions don't matter. Rather, I hear feminist women claim that that's what men say. But I don't really hear men saying it. Warlord 69, you who donated $99. Ryan 07, Andrew, God bless you. Thank you for shining the light on everything that I used to be blind on. Question for the panel. What is the first thing you look for when visiting a new hotel? What? What the fuck? What? <laughs> Bed bugs? Can we agree? Bed bugs? I mean, bed hang bugs. on, hang on. Brian, Brian, wait, 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 wait. Okay, hang on. I got to turn this into something now. Oh, okay. okay. Brian, you have OCD, right? Yeah. Do you take a black light with you to hotels, Brian? <laughs> no. No, but <laughs> I bring I bring my own pillow. No. Oh, no. I travel with my own pillow. <laughs> Not, you know, maybe you got me thinking, maybe I got to bring my own sheets and shit, but that's a lot. Uh, and I will flip the mattress just to check for bed bugs, you know? That's smart, though. 200 IQ. Yeah, yeah that's smart. That's smart. Risk mitigation. Mitigating the risk. What are you doing, fucking gang signs over there? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. All right. Throwing up something, I don't know. Well, yeah. In any case, I appreciated the convo. I thought it was a, it was a good back and forth. Yeah. Thanks. Quick, quick follow up on this. Um, 